Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another Student Ministry Moment with New Life Christian Church Online. As always, I'm Pastor Anthony. It's great to be with you today. Happy 2021. It is a new year. Hallelujah. So let's start our year off on the right foot by talking about the concept of wisdom. Go ahead. Take that second. Grab your Bible. Open your Bible app. And we'll get started. Remember, you can always pause this video at any time to give yourself the time that you need. I will be reading today out of the New Living Translation, the NLT. It doesn't really matter which translation you use, but if you want to match with me, that's what I'm using. Great. Like I said, we're going to explore the idea of wisdom today as we dive into the book of Proverbs. Before we go to Proverbs, though, let's take a quick look at wisdom in the rest of the Bible. Now, the word wisdom is used over 200 times in Scripture. That's more than money, hell, grace, perseverance, and many other important topics we've talked about or will talk about in these videos. Now, a great deal of the talk about wisdom occurs in the Old Testament, and a vast majority of those occurrences are in the books of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Now, in the book of Proverbs, the book that we're going to look at today, the word is present in 23 of the 31 chapters of that book. And it reveals that it's the main theme. But the rest of the Bible talks about wisdom, too. From the book of Exodus to the book of Revelation, wisdom is constantly referred to as a treasure, as something that should, should be obtained, something that should come from God. It's often attached with righteousness as well. Now, our discussion today of wisdom is centered on the wisest man ever to live, King Solomon. He was the author of the book of Proverbs. He obtained this wisdom from God. Now, the story of that is in 2 Chronicles 1, if you want to look at that yourself. But here's the gist. God tells Solomon to ask for anything, and he will give it to him. Solomon asked for wisdom above all else, and God grants it to him. And additionally, God also blesses him with great riches and power. Now, this brings us to the book of Proverbs. Go ahead and turn to Proverbs 1. Now, again, the author of these words is Solomon, the king of Israel, and the son of David. There are additional authors towards the end of the book but the vast majority of the book is penned by Solomon. Now, Solomon was a prolific author. He composed over 3,000 Proverbs. That's a lot more than it's in this book. And 1 Kings 4.32 tells us that he also wrote over 1,000 Psalms and was proficient in explaining science and agriculture. So Solomon loved knowledge, not just wisdom. So he, he obtained it. That was a treasure to him. He was also a popular host to people from all over the world. Who sought wisdom from him. The purpose of the book of Proverbs, however, is spelled out to us in Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. And we're going to read that now. So follow along with me. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. Again, I'll be reading from the NLT translation if you want to match with me. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right, just, and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge, and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables, the words of the wise, and their riddles. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, as we continue our study in the book of Proverbs, remember that it all starts with respect for God. And that's the part there in verse 7, the whole, the whole part of fear of the Lord. To respect God. If you don't respect the Lord, you cannot truly be wise. I compare it to, to the element of fire. If you don't have a fear or respect of it, it can have dire consequences. Let's take a look at some, some Proverbs. Now, there are a lot, and we can't possibly cover them all in the few minutes of this video. But let's take a quick survey and just gain some insight. To the author's intention. So go ahead and take a few minutes and read these two sections of parables on, on your own. Take note of what Solomon is saying about wisdom and what it means to us. So the first one is Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. And then follow that up by going to Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. As always, you can pause this video to give yourself more time. I like that lesson that we're taught in Proverbs 6 of how wisdom speaks out against sin. And that passage is the source of the popular seven deadly sins, if you're familiar with those. Proverbs isn't the only wisdom talk in the scripture. Let's go ahead and go to the New Testament now, to the New Testament book of James. James is called sometimes the Proverbs of the New Testament. 
several times, James promotes wisdom. And for our purposes, James says some things that we should consider before we end this lesson. So read with me, James 1, 5 through 6. And again, I'll be reading from the NLT. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith in God is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Now, that is an extraordinary promise. Realize this. God wants us to be wise. James says that we should ask for wisdom and we'll get it. That is certainly true of Solomon. And it's true for us, too. But sometimes we get confused about what wisdom is. James further defines what it is that we should be asking for in James chapter 3. So read with that with me right now. James 3, 13 through 18, NLT. Starting at 13. If you are wise to understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good work with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you're a bit, bitterly jealous and there are, is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting a lie. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, or demonic. For whatever, for wherever, <laughs> for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving and gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It is full mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap the harvest of righteousness. I want to end this lesson with a challenge. Every day for one month, read a different proverb. Just try it. It won't take long. And you'll find it easy to either begin a daily reading schedule, reading schedule or supplement what you've already do. Each day before you, before and after you read, pray for wisdom. Pray for a life that obeys God's commandments. Now, remember, there are 31 Proverbs. And each month has either 30 or 31 days. So sometimes you might have to read two. This video comes out the 10th of January. So you can start today reading the 10th Proverb and then work your way back around to it for a month. Remember. The beginning of wisdom is fearing the Lord. If you want to be wise, you have to align yourself with God and live in a way that pleases him. So will you accept my challenge and read a proverb a day? I'm going to do it with you. Let's start our challenge by praying together for wisdom and for humility as we pursue it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that we humble ourselves and we ask for wisdom. Open our hearts and minds to it. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen.